Thank you for joining us here at SSC Live TV. Dr. Ken Jost will be discussing how your dietary habits can assist you in your spiritual goals. Welcome to Taste and See. Welcome once again to Taste and See. My name is Ken Jobst and I'm here to uh, help you along the journey linking together faith and food. Today we're going to be taking a look at two Old Testament scriptures that refer to a particular ingredient that we may not be familiar with if we're just reading through the Bible. Our first passage comes from Joshua chapter 5 verse 11 which says, And they ate of the produce of that land on the day after the Passover, unleavened bread and parched grain on the very same day. So we're going to be talking about parched grain today. We see that that term parched grain comes again in Ruth chapter 2 verse 14, which is a verse that we had visited earlier with respect to taste and see. Now Boaz had said to her, that is, had said to Ruth, at mealtime, Come here and eat of the bread and dip your piece of bread in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers and he passed parched grain to her. And she ate and was satisfied and kept some back. Well, we're going to see that parched grain occurs at least a couple more times in the Bible. And parched grain is an interesting, interesting item. We see that it was a staple of the diets of many of the people in Jesus' time and before. To make parched grain, all you had to do was to take the, the kernels of grain, which might be wheat or barley or even oats. They, you would thrash the grain so you would remove the outer husk, blow it all away, and then with the handful of kernels, you would just take the handful of kernels and spread them out on a hot griddle. So if you had a piece of metal that you could put over the fire, you just put them down on the griddle or in a pan with no oil or anything, just let them heat up. And what happened was this. In each and every one of those grains, there's a little bit of moisture. And so parching the grain removed the moisture. With the moisture removed, the grain was lighter and it was easier to, to bite, easier to eat, but it was also easier to carry. So if you were going to go on a journey, rather than taking a big, you know, several handfuls of wheat, you would parch the wheat to remove the moisture and then that would make it, as I said, easier to eat and easier to transport. Now, in Jesus' time, this was done with virtually any grain. But, of course, Jesus would never have been exposed in his earthly career, would have never been exposed to New World grains like quinoa or maize, what you and I know as corn. So the variety of parched grain that comes from the maize plant is something that we're familiar with as popcorn. Right? Popcorn is basically parched maize, parched corn. Here's the difference. There's a little attribute of the, the corn kernel that uh, traps the moisture inside the kernel, but the husk of the kernel is so resilient that the heat and the moisture and the steam build up in the kernel, and rather than being released a little bit at a time, like in wheat or other grains, the pressure builds and builds and builds until it explodes. And the exploded parched grain then is popcorn. Now, um, I've got several different varieties of popcorn here. And these are, well, here's one of the old favorite popcorn varieties. This is, uh, it's been marketed as mushroom popcorn mushroom popcorn. It's not the flavor, it's the way it explodes. So it explodes into a big ball with the kernel at the bottom. Mushroom popcorn. And the actual ear of corn, it, it does look like an ear of corn, uh, 
but it looks very glassy. It looks like highly polished ear of corn. So this is the mushroom popcorn. This is a, a, a popcorn that is called hold, H-U-L-L-E-D, which means after it explodes, there's still pieces of the hole that are going to hang on to the, the kernel. So mushroom popcorn or hold popcorn. There are some varieties that are called whole-less popcorn. And those are the ones where there's enough fractures in the, the kernel that go all around the kernel. And so when the steam builds up, the, the fracture lines along the face of the kernel go every which way. And so when it explodes, there's no husk, no kernel left, no, no outer covering to the kernel left. So then it doesn't get in your teeth. It's a good thing. It's a great thing. I've brought a couple more varieties of corn. You, you know, um, corn originated in, what, South America? And comes in such a variety of colors and shapes and sizes and uses. This is a, a blue popcorn. It's of the wholeless variety. And it has a, it has a distinctive flavor. Now, I, I like to think of myself as a connoisseur of popcorn. Because I've been eating popcorn since I was, you know, like so high. But the, the blue popcorn, if you've ever had the blue uh, tortilla chips or blue, blue tortillas, it carries a very uh, rich and multi-layered flavor dimension with the blue popcorn. So blue popcorn, now once again, the blue kernel doesn't mean the popped product is going to be blue. So all popcorn basically comes out white or ecru or bone, you know, but, but it's, it's all different varieties of a white shade of the popped internal corn. So blue popcorn. And then I have to say that I'm uh, most partial to red kernel popcorn. Our red kernel popcorn grows um, traditionally, it doesn't grow on a long ear. Traditionally, this is a variety of popcorn that grows kind of like a strawberry. It, it, the, the ears are very short and rounded. So they, they look like a big strawberry with a, a husk on it. Um, I know it's an imperfect analogy, but, but trust me, the ears are very short and they're rounded and they're covered with this uh, garnet colored or ruby colored kernels that are just absolutely delicious. Um, when, when they pop, they don't pop as large as the mushroom popcorn. So they pop and they're smaller and as a matter of fact, the, this is ruby popcorn that's popped right here. So the kernels are here and the finished product is right there on your left. So this is, this is, without a doubt, my favorite variety of popcorn. Now, you know, popcorn is a racket. I don't know if anybody's ever told you that before, but popcorn is a racket. And when I was a little kid in second grade, my second grade teacher, Mrs. Cook, read a book to us, and the title of the book was A Hundred Pounds of Popcorn. And what the, the story was, was about a, a little league baseball team that was trying to raise money for their uniforms. And somebody donated, not the money, but they donated a 100 pound bag of popcorn kernels. And said, well, there you go, you can sell that in your concession stand and you'll make the money up. Oh my goodness, let me tell you what. This popcorn, right? any variety of popcorn, a cup of the popcorn, the popcorn itself, right? Not, not the butter and everything else that goes on it. A cup of the popcorn is only 31 calories. So it makes a fairly healthy snack. Unless and until you get into that realm, that, that twisted realm of microwave popcorn. Now I know we all have to confess our, our infirmities and shortcomings. 
from time to time. But I, I am here to say that years ago, I had a microwave popcorn addiction. And it was to such a degree that I would be eating a bag of microwave popcorn every evening in front of the TV. Now, it turns out that was not a very healthy thing because of all the trans fats that were included in that packet of microwave popcorn. As a matter of fact, uh, I was to learn much later that that microwave popcorn was probably the worst possible thing I could be eating for heart health. And, and, and also, I was told, for lung health. Oh, please, right? What I used to do, I'd take it right out of the, the microwave. It's all popped up. I would pinch the corners of the bag and pull them back and let all that steam come out. And as the steam came out, I just loved the smell of the microwave popcorn. Turns out now there's studies out that say that that's a terrible thing, not only for your heart, but for your lungs as well. So what, what am I to do? I love the popcorn, but I realize the health risks involved in microwave popcorn, which to some folk would be like smoking three packs a day. Anyway, there was an easy solution to my problem and one that I have embraced ever since. It's the air popper. So I went out to my trusty big box store and I purchased this little uh, air popper that is just quite the number. Uh, it has a switch for on and a switch for off. Actually, they're the same switch, just a little toggle switch. It's unplugged. I'm not going to fire it up for you because, you know, you know what it sounds like. It's just a big, loud whirr. But comes with the measuring scoop. So I scoop up one measure, take the lid off, put it right in there, put the lid back on, as well as the measuring cup, as well as the measuring cup lid. Plug it in, and in about three minutes, which is just maybe twice as long as it takes the microwave, right? In three minutes, I've got a bowl of popcorn. And in addition, I don't have the trans fats. However, now, now here's the upside. I can fix this popcorn any way I want to fix it. I'm not limited to the recipe that the, the folks down at the microwave popcorn factory have set out for me. So instead of just regular or movie theater style, right, I guess that just means slathered in butter. I can choose what goes on the popcorn, how much of it goes on the popcorn, and I can make a variety of different combinations just for me. And then if somebody else wants something else, we can, we can make theirs exactly to their taste. So, by the way, one other thing. I have a doctoral degree. I'm reasonably literate. I, I, I can get around, but in preparation for this show, I tried to read and interpret and understand some of the nutritional information on the side of the microwave popcorn boxes. And I was completely, okay, watch, here, here's some of the things. They would say, well, one serving is so many ounces. But they wouldn't say how many ounces was in the bag, right? So I pop the whole bag, am I getting one serving or five servings? They wouldn't tell me. A and then so many different ways they cut it up just to confuse poor consumers like me. So I gave up. I let it go. And now, from now, henceforth and forevermore, I am a devotee of the air popcorn popper. And I recommend it to you as well. You, you know what else? Watch this. Go to the movie theater, right? Go to the movie. No, you can't anymore. Well, now watch. Watch. If you were to go to a movie theater or the last time you went to a movie theater, how much does a large popcorn sell for? Well, you know, it, a large popcorn is going to be like seven or eight bucks. 
you got to be kidding. And so, once again, serving of popcorn, basically made with the air popper, you make a serving for about a dime. And, and that's, a, that's a big, good serving that gives you the satisfaction of picking up the pieces and eating them one by one. Now, let's talk about recipes. Oh, yeah, there are recipes for popcorn. Once again, you can choose the style of corn that you're going to use. It can be, look at this, red, white, or blue. We'll just lay it out right there. there there's our patriotic 4th of July popcorn. Now understand, right, you've seen this sold in gift shops, red, white, and blue. And many times we think, oh, I'm going to take that home and pop it, and in the bowl I'm going to see red, white, and blue popcorn. And you know it doesn't work that way. Sorry, that's, that's just kind of the, the way it works. Well, my absolute favorite way of eating popcorn is buttered popcorn with salt. Exactly. So you, you take a little butter, you can melt down the butter, drizzle the butter uh, right there over your popcorn. You've measured out the butter. So you know you have two pats, three pats, instead of basically a stick of butter in the microwave, right? The other thing is you get to choose the salt. Now, some people say this is all hocus pocus and hokum, but I've got to say that over the last couple of years, I've become a believer in the pink salt. Uh, pink salt, this is a Himalayan pink salt. Basically what makes it pink is that it has some sulfur in it you know, just a trace of sulfur, but it's not enough to taste. I've been very impressed with the flavor profile of the salt, and I know that sounds crazy, but, but this, uh, I, I can maybe not make it in a blind taste test, but I'm pretty persuaded that uh, this is really good salt to put on your popcorn. And once again, I've got it in the grinder, so I tend to grind it in my hand, so I see exactly how much I'm putting on the popcorn and then pinch it and put it actually in my serving on the popcorn. There's a little trick for restaurants and the trick is this and it, it happens for any company that's going to do prepared foods. People like things that are sweet, they like things that are salty, and they like things that have a a, a, a tongue feel and flavor profile of fat for, for that satisfying um, you know, eating experience. So the successful brands and successful restaurants, those who are purveyors of processed food, tend to put more salt in it than you would put. They tend to put more fat in it than you would put. And they tend to put more sugar in it than you would normally put. All of that to say is, the calories go up, the nutritive value gets kind of, you know, lost in the shuffle, and then you've got that whole sodium thing to be uh, concerned about with the salt. But in making your own popcorn this way, you're in charge. It's a good thing. So traditional buttered salted popcorn. Love it. Now, I do one other um, variation on that, and this is kettle corn for lazy folk. Right? So with my air popper, I air pop the popcorn, then I get a little dish, I put, you know, however much butter I feel like it's going to need, and then I add some of my locally sourced sorghum syrup, and I put that right in with the butter, and then I microwave it. So right here you see it's a little foamy, it's got a little bit of, uh, let me get my notes out of the way right here. But that's our, that's our sorghum syrup. There, there's another thing about sorghum syrup, it can crystallize, which means the sugar crystals harden, goes from a liquid into this uh, basically solid. All you need to do there is heat it up. So you can take off the, uh, the lid and the ring, just put that in the microwave for half a minute and you will break down those crystals and once again you'll have fluid, liquid, sorghum syrup. So, 
with maybe uh, half a stick of butter, if you're being very generous and have a lot of popcorn, you might use two tablespoons of sorghum syrup, melt them together in the microwave, and then drizzle them over the popcorn. It, it's the easiest way to make a first cousin to kettle corn. Also, add just a little salt to that. I don't mind if you add the salt if you know how much salt you're adding, right? Perfect. Now, another option. You know what? Our taste palettes kind of go in two big directions, right? You've got the, the savory, which is kind of a, a salty or umami taste profile, right? So you've got savory, but then you've got sweet. And typically, popcorn has been assumed to be a savory snack, you know, something, a nice salty snack. Putting just a little bit of that sorghum syrup in it gives it the ability to be a sweet and salty snack both at the same time. However, there's another variation. If you've not tried this, I, I absolutely encourage you to do it. Parmesan cheese right on the popcorn. Now, you may have tried this before, and, and once again, I'm recommending the, the finely grated Parmesan cheese. It's shelf stable. You can just take it right off the shelf. Uh, it requires no refrigeration, but simply some folk would say that all you need to do is shake the Parmesan cheese onto the popcorn and it makes a tremendous snack. So they would just go just like that. And once again, we put a little Parmesan on there and you've got cheese popcorn that you made at home. It's truly, it's awesome. Now, please understand, if all you're going to do is shake Parmesan cheese onto air popped popcorn, you're going to have a problem with the cheese not clinging onto the kernel. Couple of ways around that, and it all depends, right? If, if you're calorie conscious and you, you want to kind of watch your calories, get a, just get a little spritzer, right? A little water spritzer and spritz a very fine mist of water. Not a lot, not a lot. It's not a squirt gun, just a nice little you know, a little mist of water to settle on the popcorn, then the Parmesan cheese will stick to it, right? Now, however, if calories are not your major concern, but rather you really want pretty uniform distribution of the cheese on the popcorn, then that's when you get out the PAM, right? The, the, the aerosolized vegetable oil, and you, you just squirt, you know, a little squirt of uh, Pam or, or whatever the vegetable oil aerosol is, squirt that on the popcorn. Just, just one quick little squirt. That, that may add maybe 20 calories to the whole batch. And then shake the Parmesan cheese on it and you are ready to go. Another variation on this is Parmesan cheese with rosemary. Oh now, watch. It's a whole new ball game when you start putting herbs. You can put the herbs in the butter. You can put the herbs with the cheese and it is an absolutely amazing, wonderful snack. Finally, third thing that you can do is the ever popular chocolate drizzle. And the chocolate drizzle, there's many different ways to do it, but if you just want to get some of the, the blocks of chocolate, melt them in the microwave, have them ready when the popcorn comes out, and then you can drizzle, drizzle from above, right? The, the dark chocolate or the milk chocolate and just give it a little crisscrossing. It doesn't have, you don't have to soak all the popcorn, but just give it a little crisscross of that wonderful chocolate flavor. I, I prefer the dark chocolate, the semi-sweet chocolate. It's a wonderful, reasonably nutritious snack to have on a regular basis. And you know what? M maybe you're thinking right now, I'm watching him on TV talk to me about all kinds of popcorn. Maybe I need to get up and go get some popcorn myself just now. I wouldn't blame you if you do that. But remember, the microwave popcorn is going to add an incredible number of calories uh, and it's going to be adding those trans fats. Set the microwave popcorn aside. Go ahead and invest. You know what? I think, 
I think maybe $16 is what I gave for this particular air popper and it's been serving me very, very faithfully for probably about four years now. So for $4 a year, I've got an air popper that helps me nutrition-wise. Also, if you have popcorn recipes, or if there's anything that you do with popcorn that you, you would like to uh, let us know about, go ahead and contact me, kjobst at ssclive.org. We'd like to hear about some of your recipes as well. Popcorn parched grain. It's a whole grain, it's nutritious, and it's something that I recommend for you each and every time you get an opportunity to watch, taste, and see. Well, thank you again. Please tell others about uh, the, the resource that we have here. It's TV Our Way at SSC Live TV. Once again, for Taste and See, this is Ken Jobst. Bon Appetit. Have a great day.